All right, you guys. First up this morning, something beautiful to spruce up your landscaping. We've got suggestions from a pro for low maintenance perennials that grow back year after year, even in tough conditions. We need that. The plant doctor is making a house call to the morning blend. It's Melinda Myers. She's our gardening expert. She's an author, a TV and radio host, and she's here with what makes plant uh, low maintenance and how to get your perennials off to a good start, right? You bet. Well, the right plant for the right location. So mm -hmm. if you match the plant to its desired growing conditions, it's gonna be healthier, have fewer pest problems. That means less work for you. And then plants that are suited to our climate. Natives yeah. are a really good option. And we've got a few to talk about matching them to those difficult situations. When I think low maintenance, I don't want things I have to deadhead. Right. Yeah, right. I'm not gonna do it. Yep. I don't want it. things that are gonna take over my other plants, you know, no bullies in the garden. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to take care of them. They're on their own to Keep survive. Your roots to yourself. Exactly. Right. <laughs> and then, you know, stay in your space and come back each year. And so we've got a few examples. Yeah, okay. let's talk about how you can incorporate these low maintenance perennials into what you have. So tell us examples of so that. So we've got some that are good for hot dry. I think we've got a few images okay. that some plants for hot dry locations. So switch grass. And I also brought one along as a native plant. They're wonderful cultivars out I there. Do. Actually, the tall one by oh, you. Oh, um, yeah. And so Whoa. it's a great plant. Not only does it help feed some of the larvae of skipper caterpillar, Aww. the skipper caterpillars, but also the finches mm. love the seeds. And it's okay. good for hot, dry on conditions. Side. They can get the varieties up to six feet tall. Or this one, Shenandoah, only grows okay. about four feet tall. Okay. And then the next image that we have is that looks like, looks like <laughs> that looks like. You. Yes, it does. Very good. I'm squinting at the picture. Prairie <laughs> drop seed, which yep, is nice. Drop seed. So if you like our annual fountain grass you see in parks and boulevards, this is a perennial. It has the same growth habit. And when the snow and the ice forms on those seed pods over winter, they look like little gems. So it's oh. another great native, good fall color and good interest. I would want to like trim that. I don't know why it makes me want to cut it. So so this probably isn't the plant that's for you. We'll for switch me. with the switchgrass. Okay. And then, and I then, like this one. And that's goldenrod. The yellow is gold. Goldenrod, excellent for late season pollinators because it provides a lot of nectar at the time they're really getting ready to hibernate or, or move through the area. So, okay. and this is fireworks, one of my favorite cultivars. And doesn't it look like fire? That's cool. Yeah. I love that. And people can go to atc growsmart.com to find out more about uh, the smart pollinator guide that you offer there. It's a list of pollinator attracting plants. So is many people are into that, that now. Oh, I exactly. Like. And then this is, yes, it's this and it. So it shows you, is it birds? Is it butterflies? Is it hummingbirds that will attract? And bees, of course, our native bees are so important and we often overlook them worried about the honeybees. Yeah. There's also some um, wet, low maintenance plants. Exactly. What does that mean? Things that if you've got that damp spot in your garden okay. or you want to do a rain garden, this is cardinal flower. Look at the beautiful red yeah. spikes. If you've tried and failed, give it another shot. It can be a little picky. Hummingbirds love okay. this. Aww. Turtle head, if you look closely, you can see the flowers look like little turtles' heads. Oh, it's a late summer fall bloomer, so it's great because you can add some color late in the season. And oh then, yeah, I see, because they're like kind of sticking uh, yeah, out of the pod. Exactly. Oh, that's pretty. Okay. And sedges, they're kind of grass-like plants. They're not quite true grasses, but they're great. This is um, muskingum or palm sedge. And it's a wonderful plant for rain gardens or just as a filler in your garden as well. Mm -hmm. One thing that you mentioned in terms of a few things to get perennials off to a good start is to use available resources. Oh. So those are things like rain barrels, right, mulch, and using the proper water. You bet. So shredded leaves. We always seem to have leaves. Shred them with your mower. Evergreen needles. They don't make your soil acidic. So once you plant, mulch the soil. Next to you, Tiffany, that two-liter bottle. Yep or the two liter oh, bottle. Two liter bottle. This is called an aqua cone. You fill the ah. two liter bottle, you can turn that Smart. up and put it in. So you put a new plant you in. Spick it in. Right, or on a hillside, you can water right where the plant is. So it releases the water from the two yeah. liter bottle so you're not having water run down the hillside. So proper watering, mulching the soil to keep the roots cool, especially this year, and moist and keep the weeds down. And then it improves the soil as they decompose. You also have some pollinator friendly plants I want to go back to too, just right. um, because people wanted to see those as well. So the rattlesnake. Rattlesnake one. master, if you look at the leaves, they look kind of like a yucca. They're a summer bloomer and it's a wonderful, I think it attracts like 50 different pollinating insects. So it's wow. really good. And then next on the list. That wild quinine. That's it. And it kind of almost reminds me of baby's breath because mm -hmm. it's it light, like doesn't it? Yeah. 
and it's a nice weaver in the garden so it'll kind of let it wander through and mix with your other plants and the last one on the list Bap is Baptisia and it's a spring bloomer early summer and then the seed pods are black which sounds strange but with that blue green leaves they look great um, the straight species gets about four feet tall um, and then there are some compact varieties so if you have a small space garden there's some shorter ones which one was this? Just so that I know. one is that one's actually the perennial plant of the year okay. called Millennium Allium, and if it's you really probably pretty. isn't it, you'll probably yeah. smell some onion if you rub it. Oh. And it's a summer bloomer. It was selected for its adaptability. Great for pollinators as well. Not one of our natives, but you can always mix in a few non-natives. An American transmission company uses some of these native plants, mm -hmm. the ones that work in different kinds of growing um, conditions and perennials, so that they can avoid power lines, yeah. right? And pollinators to. to to kind of encourage that population. You bet, creating those corridors under their utility lines, not only for pollinators, because one of the problems with pollinators are facing, and especially the monarch, are disconnected habitats. Yeah. So they use a lot of energy going over here and then over here, so having those long corridors of plants for pollinators is a great way. And they also are using technology and working with their contractors, so if they know this is a corridor for monarchs, they're including a lot of milkweed, which Very the cool. monarchs need to lay their eggs for the caterpillars to feed. It's their only food source that they eat. It's so they're local. doing, and it's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, the other thing is it's beautiful. So, you know, you get to look at a beautiful garden, support pollinators, low growing, so we don't have conflicts with utilities. So there's not pruning and all those Important. problems and the danger related. Yeah. That's you wonderful. can see uh, Melinda at the Wisconsin State Fair, which is going on the 2nd through the 12th. She'll be there at the Green and Easy Gardening seminar she's doing. It's from 10 a.m. It's at 10 a.m. and 2 a.m. daily. Um, those days, yeah, sorry, <laughs> not a.m. It's not going to be up. It's at <laughs> the We Energy, but energy not quite. Park <laughs> stage, right, at the fair. Um, you'll get a free goodie bag, including the ATC's Grow Smart Pollinator Guide, seed packets, and more if you see her there. And she also brought along a giveaway. You can visit more at atc-growsmart.com but she wants to give away a gift package. So here's what you got to do. Call us right now at 414-799-4444. Caller number seven will win the Container Gardening DVDs, which is like $100 worth of stuff from Melinda. And a cool Grow Smart t-shirt. Awesome. Like mine. Thanks, Great Melinda. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, Good to see you. It.